The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Clem and today we're going to solve a big problem in making these videos, giving you perfect footage of really tiny SMD components while soldering. So today we are switching from tripod and a crappy camera zoomed in to a dedicated device that gives you the best possible footage and helps me soldering tiny, tiny SMD components. Amazing hacks, inspired designs, each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Oh, uh-huh, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, I can't see a thing. But this microscope gives me an idea of how to build the project. This one does not have the thing I want to build, but better ones have tiny knobs so you can adjust your workpiece in the X and Y plane. So you can see exactly where you want to look. And I think I'm going to build a contraption like that, but CNC controlled so I can position it with just a flick of a button and give tiny increments to get the exact spot where I want to be and where I want to solder. So tiny SMD boards are no longer a hassle for me and I can film them with a DSLR camera. In my opinion, the best way to physically position an object in the XY plane exactly and reproducible is use stepper motors. For stepper motors, you need stepper drivers and you need a microcontroller to control these stepper drivers. There are two ways we can position our stepper motors. The first one is use a microcontroller like this Arduino and bit bang every single step the stepper motors have to take every time. So we have to hard code everything and calculate the correct amount of steps to reach our certain destination. This is not very adaptable, so I have another idea. We use basically the same system that CNC routers, 3D printers and every other numerical controlled tool uses nowadays, G-code. This means we need one microcontroller that executes a G-code interpreter, which translates the G-code commands into the actual steps the stepper motor has to do and use a second microcontroller to interpret the commands we give him and translate them into G-code. A key advantage of the system is that we can not only use the up, down and left, right movement, we can also easily use diagonal movement and we can use pre-made G-code for pre-programmed paths. So we can do, for example, a circle around the whole thing so we can see everything in one go. You can easily build the mechanical part of the project from scratch. It's not that expensive, but there are these things. They are named cross tables or something like that. You can find them sometimes on sale for less than 30 bucks. And these are great because they don't have wiggle room and they are easily operatable. So I will use one of these in this project and attach the stepper motors directly to the input shaft. We have all our components ready. Let's get started by soldering up the stepper drivers. For this project, I will be using the TMC2130 stepper drivers by Tranemic. These are exactly the same ones that are used in the Prusa Mark III 3D printer that is known for being extremely quiet. So we need silent motion with our application. That's why I chose them. There is a wide range of TMC drivers available at Funnel for every purpose. So I can also recommend you the TMC2108 for the same application. They just have a different kind of interface. Compared to these more common stepper drivers, these are the standard Polulu type, you have to solder up the dynamic ones upside down. So there's a marking on the PCB that says top. This one has to stay on the top, so it looks quite different to a standard stepper driver. Keep that in mind when assembling. These stepper drivers are configurable over SPI on the fly while the device is running. But if you want to use them in standalone mode and just use jumpers to set the settings, then you have to close the CFG1 with a solder bridge. 
that's a very tiny spot on the PCB. Not easy to find, not easy to spot, but easy to solder and your driver runs in standalone mode. If that solder bridge is not connected and you are not setting the settings with the SPI bus, your driver won't respond to any commands. A while back I made this tiny vacuum forming machine and I got a comment by Andy Clark on the Element 14 community about it. Andy Clark, also known as Workshop Shed on the Element 14 community, says perhaps one of those IR area sensors like the Panasonic GridEye could work. I don't know if there are any that go up to high enough temperature for a reasonable price. Yes indeed, the Panasonic GridEye, which is an 8x8 array infrared sensor, would work. I'm pretty sure that would enhance the project and there are also handy development kits for the sensor available on Funnel and Newark, so I may give that a go. On my VR Pi episode, Roy Escabusa made a very nice comment. He writes, I'm amazed in this kind of games. I'm not a gamer and not a programmer, but I love to learn. If my money is enough to buy all the parts needed, I will start to build. Thank you Element 14 and all of the staff for this great presentation. Thank you, Roy. And I really appreciate it. That was my goal, inspiring you and some other people to build their own versions. That's the goal. And don't worry, actually the parts you need for the VR Pi are pretty cheap in comparison to other projects. The most expensive part is the Raspberry Pi and that is not expensive at all. So go on, build your own version and I really would like to see it. Thanks to our community members, Dave, Roy and Andy for their great comments. You have won an Element 14 Presents t-shirt. And if you want to know more about certain builds or have ideas for future projects, post them on element14.com forward slash presents. And now, back to the episode. To wire up the stepper motors correctly, you have to find out which leads are connected to the same coil. You can do this with a multimeter, but I prefer to do it the crude way. Just connect two random leads, turn the motor, and if it's hard to turn, those are connected to the same coil. If they are easy to turn, they are not connected. Just swap out the leads until you find the two pairs. In my case, the first pair is orange and blue, and the second one is yellow and red. Keep in mind that these colors don't correspond to anything, they are just manufacturer specific. So always test the coils. I use some strip board to create a plugin for the Arduino Nano and some handy attachments for all the button inputs as well as a power supply that is made with an LM370T which is just a voltage regulator that you can set to your specific voltage that you want. So I use it to knock down 12 volts to 5 volts that are fed into the Arduino Nano and the Arduino Uno while additional 12 volts get transferred over to the motor drivers and also to a fan that cools the whole device. I've tested every component separately so I know I didn't mess up the wiring and then I plugged it all together and gave it a test run. This is the device running with standard motor drivers. Pretty loud. And this is it running with the TMC 2130s. Nearly silent. I've used Fusion 360 to create some adapters from the 5mm shafts of the stepper motors to the 40mm of the cross table. So you've seen the motors moving, but let's check out the code to see how that works. This is the code we need to control the Arduino Nano. First we have to declare all the variables and all the input pins, then we declare them as input pull-ups, which is important because those are pulled to ground when they activate. So we have to have them in a known state before they get activated. Then we start our serial communication with the same baud rate that the other Arduino that runs Gerbil. We have to send G91, which sets the Gerbil board into incremental mode instead of absolute mode. Then we set it to metric units with G21 because metric units make sense. And then we declare G1 F10, which gives it a feed rate of 10. This is just needed so the girl board will accept our commands. It will refuse to work when there is no feed rate set. And it's important, do not send G92, because this will set a specific uh, position for 000, which means the starting point. 
and it will not allow the board to go into negative numbers, but we need negative numbers. We have a loop. At first we read all the buttons and we read the potentiometer with this analog read function and map the output to a range that we can use. We send G1, which is a normal move, and F plus the feed rate to give it a feed rate and to make it accept our commands. Then we print out G1, which is a normal move, x-axis, and the value for the x-axis, which will be zero or one, depending on if the switch is activated or not. We do the same thing for the y-axis and the z-axis. The z one is a little bit special. You will see that later. Then after we send any positive values, we will send the negative values that may occur because switches that get pulled in the other direction will have also zero or one, but we need to activate them in the other direction. So the motors have to run backwards. So they need a minus before that. We also send G1 for a normal move, the axis and then the value for the axis. Same for the Y and the Z axis, but Z always gets the same value if it's positive or negative, there's no difference because we always want it to go down a little bit and go back up again. And then we add some delay just to let the stepper motors reach their desired position. The code that you just saw is executed over and over again. So as long as we keep the button pressed, the command will execute over and over again. So we can basically jog the axis in every direction we want as long as we keep the button pressed. If you want to execute special pre-made G-code, you just have to declare it in the Arduino Nanos program and declare a new button. When you activate that one, it will just execute pre-made G-code command, like moving around in circles or doing left and right movements, anything you would like. Okay, the electronic part is done. I'm using Fusion 360 to create a case for the device and 3D print it. A standard size skateboard bearing provides a safe pivot point for my soldering iron. I use some screws and nuts to connect all the pieces together and mount it on the plate. And now I have a soldering iron that obeys my commands. I have done some movement tests and now after calibrating the thing, Every push of the joystick advances the platform for 0.1 mm in the Y and X axis. And if you push the button, the soldering iron goes down to the workpiece and solders. This is my macro setup. I have built this a while ago and this is the exact setup that I use to make the close-up shots for you. So this consists of a camera mounted on this ancient piece of technology, which is a photo magnifier from back in the analog days and a rear view monitor screen. So I can see what I'm filming while sitting down. Let's put this macro rig and today's project together to create the finished device and test it out. First, we have to position our device in a way that the tip of the soldering iron in the down position lines up with the crosshair of our down facing camera. So we have the exact point we want to solder right at the center. So in conclusion, this macroscope, as I call it, enables me to give you better footage of intricate detailed soldering. With the joystick, I can position the workpiece at a tenth of a millimeter exactly. Just one push of the button lets me put down the soldering iron and remove it again so I won't overheat any components and I can concentrate on the filming aspect. The solder gets fed manually, but that will get an update in the future. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see that. So today we have used common electronics and 3D printing to create a device that enables creators like me and maybe you to produce better footage of intricate detailed soldering. And in the process we made the basis for a soldering robot. 
Would you like to see a part two where we take this project and build a fully fledged automated soldering robot? Let me know on the Element 14 community. I gotta go, there's another project waiting for me.